with less than a year to the Dubai Expo 2020. Toyin Sani, the group CEO of Emerging Africa Capital, tells me how the Expo 2020 in Dubai next year can help drive cross-border investment. Take a look. I think that it's a great opportunity, um, the Expo um, 2020, and the fact that for the first time it's coming towards this region that is between the Middle East, Asia and Africa. This is the first time it's coming this way. Um, it's uh, an opportunity to showcase whatever it is that Africa and um, the Middle East has to offer before the entire world. Um, so it's an opportunity to um, for businesses to put themselves in the face of potential investors. And now I'm talking about both debt and equity investors. The multilateral agencies will be there as well. It's an opportunity, of course, to also showcase the talents that we have in Africa. Um, and, and, you know, the Expo covers the full range, even the arts. So it's, again, an opportunity for to showcase, for example, what we've done in terms of the creative arts and, mm. and the opportunities for investment. So a lot, of, yeah. a lot of opportunities for trade on one hand, yeah. also a lot of opportunities you know, for cross-border investors and investment Absolutely. coming together. Absolutely. I'd like you to speak to that point and what we can get from cross-border invest investments. All right. So um, from a cross-border investment perspective, um, I, I need to declare my buyers right now that my buyers <laughs> right now is um, with the perspective of Nigeria being able to attract foreign direct investments into Nigeria. This is um, an area where, unfortunately, FDIs have been, you know, uh, dwindling over the years. Um, clearly, we have um, a creative industry that is exciting and attractive. Um, the technology um, industry is growing and is fast becoming a major contributor to our GDP, mm -hmm. specifically financial technology. This, uh, um, and, and because of the quality of human capital and because of the sheer size, enormity of the young people, vibrant youths that are becoming technology savvy in, in Africa, I think it's a great opportunity to partner with other nations and to look for those who would be willing to invest in some of those spaces. Yeah, because when you look at all of this, it's very important that you are able to identify what the opportunities are in the first place, sure. you know, in, in order to get them. Sure, but are, sure. we, are we, as Nigeria, when you look at the Nigerian case, so trying to get that, get FDI into the country, are we, you know, identifying the right opportunities where we can partner and, the, and to take the best advantage of uh, the opportunities that an expo like this brings? Well, um, now, when you say are we identifying, is it from the private sector perspective or as a nation? Um, obviously, the responsibility will be for uh, a body like NIPC to mm. articulate Nigeria's mission. But for, the but private for sector, me, for yeah. example, from a pri private sector perspective, the huge power deficit that we have and the opportunity in the solar and renewable energy space to continue to um, advance um, the um, power supply is, is a great area, for example, that I think that it would be great if we can find the rest of the world who would see the huge opportunity there and be willing to invest. So, mm -hmm. th so that's one of the areas that I would be encouraging. Agriculture remains mm -hmm. an attractive space that we want to encourage the world yeah, because to it, invest in Africa. Because it's important for, for young companies also that are trying to scale up and trying to build build their networks. You yeah. know, an expo like this also brings that, that kind of opportunity. Uh, abso absolutely. You know, I'd like you to speak to that point and you know how they can best take advantage of building the opportunities that this expo provides for okay. them to, to scale up their businesses. Okay, so um, an expo like this and generally global events like this has um, significant participation from angel investors, from venture capital funds, from private equity funds. And so um, working with local advisors, some of our young and upcoming organization, I mean, companies should be able to organize themselves such that they can get a slot and a space. One of um, such events, for example, that we are looking at, you know, showcasing some Nigerian companies at is the forthcoming world um, body of world congress of angel investors that will happen mm. in turkey in february so the expo is that kind of opportunity where you will find all the qualified group of investors and investors that do have the means 
to invest and, and, and the interest also. There's a lot of interest in Africa. All right. When you look at it, I'd like to talk about it vice versa, whether it's Nigeria or Africa trying to get um, sure. investors in coming to come in you know, or investors from Dubai looking into Africa. You know, what would you say are the top sectors of interest, you know, for both parties? Okay. So for Nigeria, for example, or for Africa, we have said, for example, the power industry and the whole of the infrastructure industry remains unattractive because the extent of the infrastructure deficit across sub-Saharan Africa poses a very attractive investment opportunity. Now, another sector is the entire agribusiness value chain, where we have um, opportunities. We, we are yet to be um, self-sufficient in terms of, you know, feeding ourselves and sometimes also because of the deficit in the transportation um, logistic um, chain itself across so across first of all even within nigeria across nigeria and then also across sub-saharan africa so those are opportunities for international investors so infrastructure the agribusiness value chain, technology remains an attractive one. I've also talked about the creative industries. And then when you're looking at a market like Nigeria, retail remains attractive. And if you flip that also, retail is also, maybe I need to flip to the other side. So mm. you say that the UAE remains a very attractive market, is the second largest economy after in the Arab world after Saudi Arabia. It um, has some similarities with Nigeria if you look at, let's say, the fact that the um, economy used to grow at a very attractive, the GDP was growing at an attractive rate, 4.55%, mm. went down to like 1.7 and then this year 2019 we're looking at it going back up to 2.4 percent mm. you know what we've had in nigeria we had an average of 6.5 percent for about a decade went down as low as 1.9 percent last year we're looking to go back to 2.1 percent this year mm. but that's where the similarity ends if you consider the uh, gdp per capita then mm. you realize that we're looking at a much richer economy but then that makes the retail um, opportunities there because of the the wealth of the economy and mm. because of also the tourism industry the retail um, industry is attractive real estate would ordinarily be number one for a place like Dubai um, even the Expo 2020 is going to continue to drive the attractiveness of real estate investments in a place like Dubai healthcare remains attractive Education remains attractive okay. because they still have um, about 11.5% of UAE citizens are of school age. Yeah, Hospitality, we will talk about, but that is driven by tourism, which I already spoke about. Yeah, because, you know, how, how much this will move the needle for trade is also important because, you know, last year we were speaking, uh, most of this year we were speaking to the, um, the African Bank. Sure. We were talking about barriers to trade and issues there. The Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is coming, going to come in on board soon. But then one of the, the key takeaways from the engagement we've had with the Africa uh, the African Bank is the fact that the lack of knowledge, countries don't know each other to know what they're producing and, and how to take advantage of that. Yeah. You know, and, and also when you look at an ex expo like this, it opens up that op op opportunity sure. for, to experience. Sure. And then, you know, people who will be experiencing sure. the, uh, the, 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 the sure. Dubai for the first time sure. will get sure. better knowledge and then sure. be able to come back and say they're sure. looking at so-and-so sure. areas of investment because sure. their eyes sure. will have been open. Sure. I'd like you to speak sure. to that point as well. I, I totally agree with you. And that's what expos offer because you get a chance to showcase and adequately represent the attractive investment opportunities within your market. And if we're talking about Nigeria, for example, the entertainment industry is also a space that has been able to captivate the um, attention of not just the rest of Africa, but increasingly the global markets. Mm -hmm. So this is one of the areas also that I would expect a country like Nigeria to, sh to be showcasing at the expo. Um, what happens is that um, over the um, past couple of decades, Africa had been re regarded primarily as a home for commodities mm -hmm. and the attention and the, um, the attention of the world was kind of focused on the, you know, wonderful human, I mean, 
natural resources, natural resources uh, yeah. across Africa. But forgetting the fact that that is just scratch, scratching the surface of what Africa has to offer. Yeah. And in a country like Nigeria, for example, crude oil now contributes less, less than 10% of our GDP. So the Expo is a fantastic opportunity for you to open the entire range okay. of what you know, Nigeria has to offer. Yeah, because you were recently at the Global Business Forum in Dubai, yeah, and there a lot of engagements were being yeah. had around you know, attracting investment between Africa and Dubai. I'd like you to speak to the importance of having um, events like that happen to mm -hmm. open up people's minds to, to a better experience of, of, of what's happening in, okay. and opportunities from both, both sides. Well, the world is increasingly becoming a global village. Um, the internet has opened the opportunities for businesses, so your market is no longer restricted to those who you are in physical contact with. Mm -hmm. That also means your competition is also no longer re re restricted to those whom you are in physical competition with. And so when you expose yourself by participating in international um, fora like the Global Business Forum, you get to size up the competition. You get to learn to understand the demands of the global markets. You also get to build networks and you know, a network of collaborative partners that can support you in, as it were, stepping up your game. And one of the initiatives that excited me, um, that is being driven by the Dubai International Financial um, Center, the CEO of whom I met and was on the same panel with, is that they are now setting up this cross-mentorship group between African um, SME CEOs, African founders and business leaders, and those from the UAE. Mm -hmm. And what that means is that if I am in the um, logistics space yeah. and I am being, I'm facing the challenges of um, scaling up my logistic business, for example, across Africa, I can learn from, from the, experience. the experience of a similar, of the founder of so a more similar or less business. Knowledge sharing. Knowledge local. sharing, but not just general knowledge sharing, but one-on-one -on -one mentorship, actually matchmaking, you know, CEOs of African companies with CEOs of companies from the UAE. And I think it's a fantastic um, initiative. And the mentoring can be, the mentor could be on this side and the mm. mentee on the other side and vice versa. But the idea is people who have achieved in a space where you are being challenged now sharing ideas with you.